and welcome back to my channel. So if you guys have been wondering where my teacher bullet journal plan with me video is, well, here it is. Um, actually, so here's the thing. I think I mentioned a while ago, and I always forget who I'm telling on Instagram, on YouTube or whatever, but I mentioned a while ago that I wanted to design my own bullet journal for this year for teaching because I have hand drawn my bullet journal for the last three years using notebooks that I purchased and I liked how all of them worked but I realized that my the setup that I'm using is very stable and because you know unlike in my bullet journal where I set it up like on I set up the month once a month and it takes me you know X amount of time and then I do dailies and all of that whereas with my teacher bullet journal I actually need the entire school year all at once just for how my brain works and how I like to organize things and so probably midway through last school year I started thinking that you know it's probably time for me to design my own bullet journal and just print it out every year and like update a couple of little things but basically just like have it ready to go print it out find it myself and then we're good to go and so that's what I actually did I set up up, like I, I designed everything in InDesign um, back in like April literally might have been April I don't even remember it was one of those things that during lockdown I sat down and I got working on it and by the time I realized that I should have probably filmed some like process footage for you guys I was basically done and uh, yeah whoops so I don't have any of that process footage for you guys unfortunately um, I did show you guys the binding process of my bullet journal. So I will link that one up here or up here, whichever side it ends up going, I don't know. Um, but I will link that like notebook binding footage for you. Um, the process that I did was exactly the same. I was just smart this time and I made my signatures 32 pages. So I only had six signatures to do instead of the like 12 I think that I had to do or something like that for my bullet journal. So like I kind of reduced the number of little like packets of paper that I had to sew together. But otherwise the process is exactly the same. I did the vellum and you guys will see that when we go to the table. Um, you guys will see kind of the flip through of everything. So I just kind of chalked that up to a lost cause and I figured I would give you guys a flip through. Now that it's actually bound, I finished everything like the covers on and all of that kind of fun stuff. Um, I'll give you guys a look inside, show you kind of close up on all of my pages, and we'll talk a little bit about setup. Unfortunately, I am not going to be able to set up a lot of stuff with you guys because I don't actually have my schedule. I, through a series of events, um, my school typically mails out our kind of preliminary schedules, which it's actually pretty true like it's a couple of things might change but usually by the time they, they mail us our schedules like not very much is going to change and last year I ended up moving after so we have this paper we have to fill out in January and then we get our schedule in like June well I hadn't moved yet in January so I put my old address on the paper and then when I moved I had a year's worth of mail forwarding and so it was fine however this year I'm outside of my mail forwarding time and even though I put my new address on the paper I think with how everything kind of went down at the end of the school year like it was pretty hectic they sent it to my old address I'm pretty sure and so I never got it I went by to try and get it from the the rental agency that um, like is in charge of my old apartment I asked them about it and they never got back to me and so I just don't have my schedule so I am actually going to this week the schools open back up like admins back um, at school and so I'm actually going to email the secretary and see if there's any way that I can either come up and get it or if she can email it to me like how whatever is easiest see if there's any way I can at least get my preliminary schedule just to kind of see what my week's gonna look like and all of that kind of stuff. I also start by filling in like on my Google Calendar, I fill in all my classes, and that way um, I fill it in like by day and by class. And so if one thing changes, I just have to change that one thing and change it for all of them and like I'm good to go. But it actually, having that schedule really kind of kick starts my motivation for the new year and it also allows me to start really like planning things. It, it allows me to like kind of make things more concrete in my mind for what I wanna do and like what things are gonna look like and all of that. And so because I don't have that there's actually a lot of my setup that I can't do which is honestly stressing me out I've literally had several stress dreams where in the dream my boss gives me my schedule like literally dreaming about this it honestly stresses me out so much so you know what we're trying we're working with it so hopefully I will get my schedule soon but I really wanted to get this video filmed so that I could show you guys inside my teacher bullet journal and so that it wouldn't be like too late into the start of the school year before I actually showed it to you and like all that kind of stuff so 
I'm going to set up what I can with you guys. Um, you guys are going to see over there what I actually end up getting to set up with you guys, but that's the reason why I can't really do much more is just because I don't have the information that normally at this stage in the summer I already have. You know, it is what it is. So let's head on over, take a look inside my new teacher bullet journal and see what I'm able to set up. And I will see you guys at the end for a little wrap up. So this is my teacher bullet journal for next year and you guys might remember this um, notebook cover from a while ago when I was using my A5 bullet journal. This was the notebook cover that I was using. So once I switched over to the B6, I obviously couldn't really use this notebook cover. It's just a little bit too big. And so I had been using it for my some lines a day for the past seven or eight months, something like that. And when I decided that I was going to make my own teacher bullet journal this year, I I knew that I wanted to use a notebook cover of some kind just because the way that I make the cover to my notebooks, it's really just cardstock. And I know there are ways to make like better notebook covers, but I just haven't really played around with that yet. So what I did is once I made up my bullet journal, I decided to go ahead and take this notebook cover that I had. My some lines a day lives at home, so it doesn't really need to have a notebook cover. I was just kind of using it because I really like this cover. So this is going to be my notebook cover for next year. And I kind of love how like the mint and everything goes with the gray. So I did finish making, so let's move that out of the way for right now. So this is my teacher bullet journal. I finished it up a little while ago. And as I mentioned before, did not actually document the process because I was a bad YouTuber and I kind of got working on it and forgot. But here is what she looks like. And I've actually pulled out, I think this is going to be oops, my main pen for next year. I wanted a clicky pen just so that I wouldn't accidentally lose the cap. This is one that I got in Korea and it's a little like gray. It's got cats on it. It's super cute. So let's go ahead. I'm actually, I honestly, so, so. We're gonna do a bit of a setup in here. And you guys will have heard in the intro kind of what's been going on with all of that, why this is less set up than it normally would be at this time of year. But you know, we're gonna do what we can. So let's move the cover out of the way. I've got, actually, I haven't even broken in my spine. So let's actually give the spine a little bit of a break in. Oops. So I kind of start roughly in the middle and then sort of like alternate my way uh, out. So I was smart this time because I did 32 page signatures, which meant that for a 192 page notebook, which is what this is, I only had to sew together six signatures to get all of the pages, which was really nice compared to my bullet journal, which I did in like eight page signatures or something ridiculous and I had to sew so many together. So this one, as you guys can see, I have bigger little packets so my signatures are bigger and so it was not as uh not as time consuming to sew together also i intentionally made this um it's basically got enough pages to do what i need to do and not any extra because i wanted to kind of keep the weight down since i knew also that i was going to be using this notebook cover which is a little bit like it's not super heavy but it does add some weight and i really wanted to kind of take that into consideration so i when i Oh dear, yeah, so you can see my glue over here. So when I actually was putting this together, I decided to do some of this peach vellum that I have. I really almost always do some kind of a vellum as like a fly page because one, I really like the look and two, it just means that my front page is not like necessarily glued. Although this one you can clearly see, oh, what did I, <sighs> do you know what I forgot to do? I literally forgot to do my thing, which actually like because of the way the fly page glued down, it actually worked out fine. Normally, however, I would do a little crease with my bone folder and like open that there. Um, so actually I've got my bullet journal over here. So this is, you can see here, this is what I did on this one. So it like folds over there. Whereas here, obviously it just like opens straight up. So I do have this little section that I could fold, but because I don't really need that page, like that's kind of fine. I do, however, need the page in the front. So we're just gonna like fold. Whoops, I did, I did a weird thing when I bound that, but that's okay. Honestly, I don't bind these kinds of notebooks all that often. So even though I remember how to do them, I, they all come out a little bit differently because I just don't do them frequently enough to really have like a, a solid system that I do it the same way every single time, which is fine. So I have my schedule, which uh, as you guys know, I don't yet have my schedule, which I'm very sad about. And then I just have my information. So please return to Miss Scott. And I've got my work email and my school and the year, which is why I've covered that up. 
And then I just left a little space over here. So what I do need to do, and I fully forgot to deal with this before I started filming because once again, I just was like, let's start filming. Um, so this is actually going to be where I put my year at a glance and, and you know what? I don't need my year at a glance. Literally, I don't need my year at a glance. What I do need, however, are my school holidays. So I'm gonna put my school holidays over here. So basically, I will probably leave this page blank and I'm gonna do over here just like, you know, because we've got our, we've got Tucson, we've got Christmas, we've got winter and spring, and then the basically start of school and the end of school. So I will do those over here. I'm just not gonna deal with that right now because it's not super interesting. Um, but that is what is gonna go there just so I kinda know what holidays we have. Also, if there are any other holidays, I will most likely just end up marking them on here. But I like to have the big school holidays. It gives me something to like look forward to, I guess. So this is, We'll just do kind of a quick flip through and then we'll see what all I'm gonna get set up I probably won't do all of it on camera just because it's not the same as like drawing all the spreads You know what I mean, but I'll show you guys what everything is. So this is my monthly setup and let's actually zoom in so here is one of the monthlies up close so you guys can see over here i've just got week and then monday through sunday i do keep the weekend even though it's for work i just always put the weekend in because then i don't lose days when i'm like writing out the the what's them called the like when i write the numbers on for the dates and then i just have august 2020 so i do put in the year for my monthlies just like just to be super clear about that so what i'm gonna have to do for all of my monthlies is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do the week of the calendar year and the school week so actually what we can do I can kind of show you looks I like to start with August just because that's when back to school is and I can't do a partial month and so I just do all of August so here this is Saturday and Sunday oops so this is one two and I like how I said I was gonna show you everything and then do a setup, just kidding. We're, we're gonna set up as we go apparently. So. So I'm actually just gonna do, I did 31 even though that is literally for August. I just didn't wanna do a partial like jump it back up here just because. So then what I'm gonna have is my week. So this is week 31 is my first one. So I'm actually gonna do the calendar week on the top. So 30. Three, five. So basically I'll go through and I will fill out all of my calendar weeks and then once I have the school weeks, which I don't actually have my general calendar right now, um, actually I have pictures of it so I can go back and do that, but I'll write in the school week, so 1A, 2B, 3A, 3B, or 4B, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, over on this right side so that I have both of them uh, at a glance, which I just really like. It's not like the most useful information necessarily, but it just kind of keeps me on track and like my brain can like, I don't know, like it just makes it easier for my brain to wrap my head around like when we actually are. So that is what all of my monthlies look like. And I don't know if you guys can tell, this is actually my font. So I did use my font for all of the writing in here. And what's really cool then is I can go back in the masters and all I have to do is change the year every year and just like reprint it out. And that is good to go, but I don't have to like rehand letter or anything like that. Like we are good to go, trying to simplify. So that is what all of my monthlies look like. So you guys can see I did little half page monthlies because I honestly don't need any more space, I don't think. And I go from August through July. So even though my like work stuff really starts here the last two days and I really don't see kids after the end of June, technically school reopens in August and it closes in July. So I just leave those two months on there. And it also, it works out so that I have three full spreads of monthlies. So it's nice and even, which I like. So there. And then it jumps directly into weekly. So again, I used my font. So all of the my masters for the weekly has my class periods on this side. I like to always have that. And then it's got Monday through Friday up here. So what I have to do is go through and once I, I need to figure out what week like 1A is. So I'll write that up here, that's what that space is for. And then I'll just write like, you know, say say it's 1A should actually be the beginning of September. So it would be, you know, Monday 31 August, Tuesday 1 September, Wednesday 2 September, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of what I do. So I just like wrote in the days of the week and I'll fill in the rest of the date as I'm going. And then I will start filling in my schedule once I actually get it because I still don't have my schedule, yay. Um, but that means that, cause previously I would have to handwrite all of this and handwrite all of this. And so now 
it's like done for me and then this is where my notes can go and I actually have a little bit of space down here I don't know how useful it would be but I do have that space and it actually is all dot grid I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that but all of these pages are dot grid so that I just have like a little thing but I did it very pale um, to make it really just kind of fade into the background so I'm hoping this is gonna be enough like notes section. I've kind of streamlined my process, so I think it'll be okay, but we'll see how that goes. So I just went ahead and I did all 36 weeklies, literally just, I have all the weeklies through the end of the school year. And this way I can start kind of planning ahead and filling out the dates and stuff. And I don't have to worry about like not having the week. I mean, I always do all of my weeklies ahead of time, but you know, I've got all of the hours in there. I've got everything. I just have to fill out the week and the date information and then my schedule once I have it. So that is basically the end. So this is week 36. I just did a little separator of dot grid over here just, just to kind of separate out those two sections. I didn't do it for the monthlies just because that's kind of fine, but this is actually something that's new. So I use a grade book to do attendance and I previously would buy an A5 size grade book and an A4 size grade book. So the A5 would be for attendance and homework and the A four would be for actual grades. And so because this is my first time in an A5 bullet journal, I was like, well, why don't I just do attendance in here and then I don't have to buy that book? Because like I really, in terms of like the pages I need, I basically need this much plus like some note pages. And I was like, oh, well that would actually make it so that I would have a normal size notebook, but I wouldn't actually have to buy, like you can see it's literally like not even half is all of this stuff. So I, We'll see how it goes this year. I'm hoping it'll work. So basically what I'm gonna have to do is fill out my kids' names. Now the one kind of bummer is that with the way that it printed, oops, so I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it. You have to kind of see through here, whoops. Just one page, there we go. So you can kind of see here that they're offset by just a hair. It's literally like, less than a quarter of an inch and a little bit offset over here. So what I had hoped to be able to do was actually like write the kids' names here, cut off the pages, because I usually need like three or four spreads per class. So cut off this side and then write the kids' names over here on like the end and not have to rewrite it every single time. However, and I might still try and do that just because I do have the alternating colors, so I should pretty easily be able to tell like which line it goes to, but I just kind of need to play around with that and see if it's gonna make it too confusing uh, or if I want to yeah I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do that so this I I also can't set this up until I get my class list so like this is a non a non starter right now I can't do anything with this until I actually get my class list so that is what we've got over here so I just did a bunch of different pages I basically did about the same number of pages as what's in the grade book that I actually purchased because that's enough for my seven classes. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. So I have this up through a good long ways. I literally did not even do numbered pages on this one. And as you might've noticed, I don't have an index because everything is like all the same things are together and I really don't need an index for that. Like I started indexing in um, the like term that I used last year for my bullet journal and realized that it just wasn't really necessary. So I just dropped that and dropped page numbers in general. So once I am done with these, I have this over here. So this is actually, I'm actually gonna label this. Um, I'm gonna leave this one kind of to itself and then I'm gonna do a little header here. This is gonna be for my notes. So I need, I'm gonna just grab a pen. Let's actually do gray, why not? So, so we're just gonna do notes. And actually, you know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna do it up here. So just gonna do the notes up there and then I'm gonna just separate this in two roughly. I'm literally not even gonna measure because I don't care. Okay. So then we're gonna just do up here, yeah, make the most. And let's do a little bit of white out. There. Yeah. 
So I'm actually gonna just use this first page to be my index so that if I want to index things, because I wasn't gonna write on it anyway, so I might as well. So what I can do is I can just index my notes. Those are the only things that even like maybe need to get indexed and I don't even know that I necessarily will. So I just gave myself a bunch of pages for notes. I do these, I use these for like meetings that I have. Sometimes I glue stuff in if I get information from school. I don't know that I will this year just because this is the smallest notebook that I've ever used and so I feel like it's gonna take up too much space if I do that. So I typically have a binder for that kind of stuff so I might just put it in there. But this is really the only place that I would even want an index for, so I'm just gonna throw it in right there. Um, so yeah, that is basically in my teacher bullet journal. So what I need to do actually is, I'm gonna look really quick. So I just checked really quick on my, whoops, on my phone, because I have pictures of the calendar. So this is actually, I was right, week 1A is the 31st of August which I can't fill out really anything because I don't have my schedule yet, but I can at least show you uh, four. Oh, so that is basically, whoops. So that is how I fill out my weekly. And then the other thing that we need to do today that I thought I would kind of do with you guys is my color code, because I actually haven't done that. So let's move this. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put this back in here okay all right so and I will end up writing it in my teacher bullet journal like I'll I'll have a page or a sticky note or something so I can do um, my color code but for right now we're just gonna kind of plan it out over here so um, this is these are all the pens that I used last year and these are the pens that I, like the markers that I still have that I wanna use for my teacher bullet journal this year. And basically my goal is to not buy any more pens for work and use up the ink in the ones that I have. So what I need is a color code. And one of the things that is going to be a little bit funky is I don't have my schedule, so I don't know if my work has changed any of the classes that they told me I was going to have. So typically they don't. So kind of the way it works is in like January, we get a piece of paper that we have to fill out that basically says like, these are the classes I had this year, these are the classes I'd like to have next year, like do I want any changes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then in like, June, yeah, like in June-ish, they will give us a piece of paper that has like our hours for the next year. And so for example, it'll say like you have two 11th grade classes and one 11th grade honors class and da 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 So it'll go through and lay everything out like that. So typically once you get that, like that's pretty stable. And then in mid-July, you get your schedule, which I did not actually get my schedule, which I, I've already explained that. So I didn't actually get that. So I know that typically the stuff they give me on that paper and the schedule that I get in July is usually, if not identical, but very similar. And then the schedule I get in July versus the schedule I get for the teacher in-service days might change in terms of like this hour might move, but like the classes themselves won't change. However, last year I had a class on my paper from June that when I got my schedule in July, it was a different class and it was only one. It's the only time it's ever happened. And I honestly think it was because of like scheduling difficulties. So I'm going to base my color code based on what I was told I was going to have, but I'm not going to finalize it until I actually get my hands on my schedule because like it might change. So I'm just kind of going through and picking out all of my markers. Oops. Let's see, I've got so many markers. And like honestly, the markers that are in, oops, that were in here, I really didn't use. So those are probably gonna be the ones I take first from because they have the most ink left still. And also because, so, because my bullet journal is smaller this year, I think I'm not gonna use any of my um, thicker Players. I think I'm only a couple of them. I might use a few, but I think in general I'm gonna go for my thinner markers because it'll be neater to write in there. So these I'm gonna hold out um, and figure out what I'm gonna do with them later. However, however, I do like to use these two as my weeks. Uh, I wanna use a smaller one, honestly. I wanna use a smaller one. So we're just gonna like put those over there for now. Okay, so I have, let's take just a random pen. Oops. So I have seven classes and I haven't looked at this in a while so let's see if I can actually remember. So I'm supposed to have um, these guys, 
these oh this pen is not working very well all right well that's problematic let's use this one okay so I have my own kind of shorthand that I do and I think I've kind of explained the French system to you guys before but just roughly uh, capital E is for the Euro class, which is like an honors level, it's two extra hours a week. And a lowercase e is my regular English classes because I'm gonna have a number after that. So for example, we label our classes one through five. So let's say I have like seconde uh, trois, for example. Um, so when I find that out, I'm gonna write like a three at the end, or you know, if I have like premier un or whatever it is, like I'll write it after that. But these are only like the one group, so I don't have that. But this is just kind of place markers so that I know what I've got. So what I like to do is, these two are going to be the same exact group of kids these two are going to be different groups of kids but I want them to be in the same color family because they're the same level and then this one I want to kind of like go with it so otherwise I want all of these to have different colors like anywhere I have a line I want those to be different colors because they're different years so that's kind of the way that I organize it now I know that I did um, I did purple for my 11th graders last year, and then I did orange for the Euro class, which I don't know, ooh, that's not that one that I want. And actually, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna pull out all of my thinner markers. I don't really have that many left in here, so that's cool. Um, there, and then I've also got these ones, whoops. Not, however, oh no, not my permanent marker. So, there. So I have all of these markers kind of as my like options. So I think I had 10th grade a couple years ago and I actually did them as green and I kind of like that. If I have another green that I can do, um, which I could do like mint, which typically I do teal for these guys. So I think we're gonna have to redo everything because I used to use blue for my seventh graders and I no longer have seventh graders. So I think we're gonna have to change that up. How do we wanna do this? So wait, this is not for here. This is not, whoops, not you, you. All right, so we're gonna actually put our markers in rainbow order. I know, I don't use red for any classes. Um, so those go off to the side. So we've got our orange, yellow, peach, peach. Uh, greens, greens, and oh, here's like a pink. There we go. Then uh, blue. <laughs> Literally trying to think of the rainbow. That's cool. Nice thing to forget. There we go. And then I've got purple and gray is not gonna be used as a color. Okay, so these are my colors. Knowing that I never use red for a class, and I try to make sure it's something that's gonna be legible. So I typically don't use yellow, but we might this year. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull a little thing over here and just test some colors. That's actually really, that I can definitely use that. Okay, hold on. Oh, that's like orange. Yeah, wait, no, I'm gonna use the thinner. I'm gonna maybe try not to use the twin tone and just use these ones or like these if I can. So I've got orange, wait, this is one, that's one I'm not using. Okay, so these ones are kind of the same color. These orange ones are very similar. So let's move these out of the way and see if I can like not do that. So um, what I might do is switch it up. Hmm. This is always like, I have to go with, I want to use markers that I have versus I need something that makes sense in my mind. And so, yeah, um, I kind of wanna have these guys be green, which means that I need to not do teal for these ones. Cause I used to do teal for this, this class, but I think we need to not do that. So let's see what colors we have here. That's kind of bluey. There. Yeah, those are gonna be, oh dear, that, nope. This one's gonna head to the trash. That's not gonna last long enough. Okay, so these two are very similar colors, which is gonna be problematic. This one, okay, so that's a possibility. What about you? It's like greener. Um, so what if we did... It's gonna be too similar. Honestly, it's gonna be too similar. 
So, and I'll, I have this thing where I'm like, I'm trying to kind of do it in rainbow order, but I think I'm not gonna be able to. So you know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm actually gonna do, um, here, let's do it this way. I'm gonna end up having to use my twin tones, I think, but we'll figure that out later. Okay, there, whoops, you two. All right, so these are kind of the colors. So I've got here, oh, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do blue for these guys now. Yeah, this is gonna be, okay, so this is gonna be, um, one of these is gonna be this one, and one of these is gonna be that one. Okay, so that is gonna be for my 11th graders. And then we're gonna do, let's see, do we wanna do purple? for one of these, or I kinda wanna use these pens actually. Why don't I have more of these? That's a bummer. I've only got five. All right, well, we're not gonna be able to do that, cool. So, ooh, what if I did this and that, that's gonna go out. But I could do this one. Ooh, you are running out of ink. Oh yeah, you are for sure running out of ink. Those ones are fine though. All right, um, so that, I'm gonna do this. So I think I wanna do, oh, well that makes sense. Okay, what if we did orange and then mustard? That'll work. So I think we're gonna do this one for these guys. I'm gonna do my main class the main class is gonna be mustard, and this class is gonna be orange. Okay, there. Then I'm gonna do, this one is teal. Because for some reason I just like to do that as teal. And I need, I think I'm actually gonna do this one. My brain is gonna have such a hard time getting used to this new color code, but it'll be fine, we'll figure it out. Um, all right, so I need another color over here. This is problematic, I don't have another color. Because I'm trying to keep like, you know, if I run out of pens, I have extra ones, so I can't pick any of these ones really because I've already used them. So, I wish I had another blue. I could also just do, I don't necessarily, no, I want them to be different. I want them to be different. That's gonna make my life easier. Let's remember why I do this. So let's do, so this is here, for example, this is my backup color for this one. I like to have a backup color for everything. This is backup for this one. This one, I don't really have a backup. I don't have a backup for the mustard. This is backup for orange. Um, this is the backup for that one. This is the backup for this one, these like same, honestly. Um, and this periwinkle one doesn't actually have a backup. Unless I wanna do like actual purple, but I need another color for here. What color haven't I used? I've got orange, I don't love this orange. Do I wanna use twin tones? So if I were to make my color code out of twin tone markers, what could I do? So I could do, actually just do that. That, could just do like a pink. Ugh, I don't like these, these are terrible. Not a fan. Yeah, no, these are literally the worst. And then literally the ones I have left are just too similar. Nope, we don't wanna do that. So, I don't like these. Well, actually, no, I don't mind that. I think we're gonna do this one for this. So, let's actually do, I'm gonna have to do a new paper, which is fine. This happens, that orange though. 
that's literally just orange. Why don't I just do mint? Because that's a Euro class, like that's that's good enough. All right, so I think that's what we're gonna do for right now, unless I need to kind of figure this out. So this is kind of my very like haphazard, unofficial way of doing my color code when I know I don't actually want to buy more markers because I already have a bunch and I might as well use them up kind of thing. So this is actually the secondary one for this. Why did I leave you in there? That was silly. I actually don't have second markers for all of these, but it's fine. This one. Why did I do that one with a backup? That's weird. That was an odd choice. I know why I did it though. That's fine. Okay, so I think we're gonna do that. And honestly, it's not like my favorite. Some of them are a little bit more close, like close together than I would like. But honestly, I just need them to be different enough so that at a glance I can see my weekly. They don't need to be like super, super, super different. And I'm also trying to keep things very legible, which is why I don't do like a true yellow, which I don't really have a true yellow at this point. Um, you know, I don't do a true yellow. I tend to avoid things like peach. I don't like to do red. Um, you know, I try to keep things like kind of calm, if you will. So I think this is what I'm gonna go with. But again, I can't really do anything more until I get my schedule and until I see if those are still the classes that, you know, the classes I was supposed to have, if they are the classes that I actually have. So that is kind of how I figure out my color code. Again, it might change, but you know, this is kind of what I've got for so far. So yeah, let's uh, pop back over and have a quick little chat before we finish up. So that is my teacher bullet journal. I'm honestly really excited about the fact that I don't have to draw all of those spreads, like 12 monthlies and 36 weeklies, like it's a lot. I'm also really excited to see how that like attendance and homework section in my bullet journal works because if I can avoid buying another notebook, like that would be awesome because that's one less thing I have to carry around. I already want to have that big A4 size grade book just because I like having all this space. So that's not something that I'm going to probably stop buying, but at least for the attendance and the homework, like, you know, if I can fit it in my bullet journal, why not? So we'll see how it works. Um, I will definitely give you guys a check in at the 10 week mark and see like how it's going. I've never used the size before, you know, I've never used the attendance in my bullet journal before. So there's a lot of kind of new things this year, even though the overall setup, like all of the elements are honestly the same. There's just a couple of different changes because of like this adaptation of using a notebook that I created myself. So we'll see how that actually goes. Also, the color code, honestly, hopefully it'll work. Um, I'm on, My main goal, more than anything, was I have so many markers and I just didn't want to buy any more pens. I need to like use up the one I, ones that I've got because they're markers that I only use for work stuff. I don't really use them in my bullet journal. I don't really do, like, I don't color. You know, I don't really have any other use for them. So I really wanted to work on using up those markers before I go out and I buy a specific set of markers that has the exact colors that I want for my color code. So. Have I kind of figured out a random color code based on the markers I have? Yes, but honestly, like, we're just trying not to waste markers. So, we'll see. Um, obviously, with the 10 week update, you guys will see if I ended up changing anything in that color code. There's a possibility just, um, you know, as I'm going through and kind of setting things up, I might end up changing some things, but overall, I think it'll work well enough. Um, because I no longer use uh, so I, I've updated my binder system. So previously I had one binder per class or one binder per like grade level. So what I do now, well, what I did last year is I have a binder for middle school and a binder for high school. I think what I'm going to end up doing this year is I might have a binder for middle school and then a binder for 10th grade and a binder for 11th grade, just because then it's like two or three classes per binder. We'll see. I'm honestly, I'm trying to like reduce the number of binders I have and the thin binders that I use. I don't have enough room to fit all seven of my classes, but, and actually I'm going to have to change it because last year I had four middle school classes and three high school classes. And this year I have 
two middle school classes and five high school classes. So I, I can't do five classes in one binder. Like I just won't have enough room. So I think I'm going to have to do middle school, 10th grade and 11th grade and just do it like that. Um, and so because I no longer do a separate binder per like level, I don't really color code my binders anymore. So I used to have a color coded folder, binder, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And now I just kind of adapt with the the stuff that I actually have so the color code is really what I use in my teacher bullet journal just so that I can see at a glance because honestly when I block out my times it helps me see at a glance like these three hours for this class and these four hours for this class and so because they're all the same color my brain goes oh yep those are all the same class I see them you know Monday Thursday Friday or Monday when you know what I mean like it's really just for that it's not for any other reason and so if it's not like a perfect color code it's totally fine so so I know like you guys are probably like but it's just a color code get over it like I know but I have noticed that the better my color code is the easier my brain had like the easier of a time my brain has to like link things and it honestly helps me not forget stuff it helps me remember what I'm doing with each class because I have that color link with the class itself so it is honestly kind of important for me because I have like for example, last year I decided that the class that I'm the head teacher for I was going to keep as dark blue, except that I had, you know, I had two seventh grade classes the year before that and so it was class three and class five, actually no, two years ago it was class one and class five and I was the head teacher in class five. Last year I had two classes and it was class three and class five except I was the head teacher in class three. I can't tell you how often my brain wanted to still use the dark blue for class five, even though I was the head teacher in class three, because in my brain, class five like linked that way. Like it was so hard. And so that's the other kind of reason that I'm revamping my entire color code is because I have different classes. And so I need to like re cement those links. And so I need to like have different classes sort of associated with different colors so that I have an easier time like adapting to the new color code. So yeah, that's that's my little spiel on color codes. So, so that is my new teacher bullet journal. Let me know if you guys have any comments or questions. If there are things also that you wanna hear about like my teaching setup and all of that. Um, I haven't honestly gotten to a point of setting up my teacher bag. So I will hopefully still do a video on that, but it's probably gonna be a little while just because just because it, it it's going to be a year like that. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that is all I have for you guys. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye hey guys. So if you've made it all the way to the end of this video and are actually watching my end screen and you're not subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it. If you would, there's a little button right there for you to do it. And if you're interested in watching some more of my videos, I have links to two of my older videos off to the left there. So you can check those out if you would like to, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.